Hi everyone, my name is Matt Dozier with the U.S. Department of Energy and we are here in snowy Denver, Colorado for Solar Decathlon 2017. This is uh, a Solar Decathlon first here. We have snow. Uh, it's our first year in Denver. It's been sunny, it's been rainy, we've had all kinds of weather conditions so far. But um, So Solar Decathlon, if you're not familiar with it, is a competition that challenges students to design and build solar-powered houses. Uh, this house here is uh, designed and built by a team from the University of California, Berkeley, and the University of Denver. And I'm here with one of the teammates uh, to help give us a little tour, tell us about uh, what makes this house incredible. Hi everyone, I'm Sam, uh, the project manager from uh, the UC Berkeley side, and welcome to Rise Home, uh, the house built for uh, Richmond, California that's currently surviving its first snowstorm. So yeah. let's uh, take a walk on inside. All right. Watch your step here, it's a little uh, slipper slippery, I think. Uh, we're all kind of getting our footing, I think, around the uh, solar village. You can see there's uh, snow falling on all these homes. Um, but this is, uh, again, it's a competition which challenges these college student teams to, to design houses that draw their power uh, from, from the sun. So um, let's, let's, we can keep going here uh, and watch our step along so the way. I wanted to stop us right here first um, and give you a quick background. Uh, our house is designed for Richmond, California, as I said, um, a suburb of San Francisco that's quickly expanding into a more urban uh, setting. So we designed for multifamily infill lots. Uh, so our uh, structure is actually stackable. Um, so that's why you'll see a deck and a house. And the deck is actually the same size as uh, the unit and is meant to represent the roof of a unit on a second level. So tell us a little bit now about this um, in incredible you know, structure that has, you know, uh, decorating the sort of outside of the house here. So our facade really brings some life to the exterior of our house due to the stackable nature as well as the energy efficiency that we were uh, striving for. We really came to this uh, box that we were going to build, um, but we didn't want to bring a box to the competition. So the architects at Berkeley came up with this modified sine wave facade um, that really brings life to the home and also uh, works well with this competition in which we're tracking a lot of scientific aspects about our houses and uh, it flows just like our house has been uh, flowing through this competition. Right, so it's artistic, but it, it incorporates some of the sort of scientific principles you guys are thinking about. Exactly, exactly. So there is some message behind the uh, facade other than just uh, its beautiful visual appeal. On the back side of the house, though, we'll, we'll get to a completely different facade, and uh, you'll see our green wall. We, uh, incorporated a moss green wall for a couple different reasons. First of all, we were looking for a green wall that did well at air filtration and carbon sequestration. Um, and there were a lot of choices for that, but we also wanted something that's highly resilient as well as low maintenance. And this moss is currently get, getting tested in uh, winter weather, <laughs> but I'm not worried because it, this product has survived winters in Chicago. Um, so it's actually very resilient to cold weather and a lot of adverse conditions. And all it requires is uh, misting every once in a while, so it really doesn't cause the tenant too much trouble. Well, it's getting a thorough misting uh, <laughs> right now. So this was uh, a beautiful day yesterday. I think we had 75 degrees, something like that, bright sunshine. But you can see how fast the weather can turn in the uh, Colorado, Denver area. Um, so, But we're, we're hanging in there. Um, you can get a closer look there at that uh, moss wall. This is the Rise House uh, designed by the University of California, Berkeley, and University of Denver team here at Solar Decathlon 2017. Uh, if you're just joining us on the stream. Um, send us your questions. Uh, leave comments in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us where you're from uh, and we'll get to them on the stream. So moving on, uh, we'll hopefully you know, make our way towards the warmer uh, parts of the house. We'll get inside here. So we're uh, going to enter off the corridor, which is the main entrance in every unit of our multifamily uh, concept. So as we enter the home, Too much about your shoes. You get. Right. It's nice and toasty in here. Yes, we are actually currently keeping the temperature up uh, for our temperature and humidity competition. So basically, throughout the entire competition, other than public access time, the uh, organizers track our uh, temperature and other aspects of our house. So we have to make sure we keep it warm 
within the 68 to 74 degree range into AC energy, AC energy. And we're actually right now producing 2.3 kilowatts from that 6.6 .6 on a snowy blustery day. So it's really quite amazing how well those panels work even with uh, a little bit of clouds in the sky. And then our Tesla Powerwall um, is a 14.2 kilowatt hour battery. It's currently being charged by this array because our loads are so low. Um, and then we're using it for load shedding uh, throughout the high peak uh, cost times for energy. Uh, so that allows us to really do well in the, uh, en the net energy contest as well as the energy metering cost contest. On the mechanical side, we have two uh, systems. The first is the Zender HRV. Uh, our house is very well insulated and airtight. Um, that is very good except for the fact of getting fresh air into it. Um, so the, what the HRV does, my favorite analogy, is it's like opening up a window without losing any hot or cold air from the inside. So what it's doing right now is it's taking cold, blustery uh, air from the exterior and running it through a heat exchanger with our stale interior air to provide fresh air at room temperature. And then up top, you'll see our only HVAC unit. Uh, pretty small compared to a lot of teams. Uh, it's actually a mini split that we used a little bit differently and we ducked it throughout the entire house. So it's a 12.5K BTU unit um, and it provides the heating and cooling for the entire house and it runs off a condenser outside that can actually power three to five of these units. So we could run multiple units in the multi-family concept off of a single condenser. Terrific. Well, it seems to be having no trouble keeping up with the uh, uh, frigid temperatures outside right now. It really isn't. It's quite amazing. Our, uh, our loads at night are so low, um, everyone is kind of surprised, um, but it's because we're using such a small HVAC system. Um, as we enter this room, it's obviously our kitchen. Uh, pretty simple, sleek design featuring uh, IKEA cabinetry, Beko appliances, and a pretty cool countertop that's actually made of 97% recycled material, material and is very durable and long-lasting. It's pretty hard to stain. It can actually be lit on fire, and then you just right, wipe off the soot. So those are some cool uh, selling aspects from the company Porcelain. So that, of course, you you, you want to avoid that. I mean, that's not recommended, right? Uh, <laughs> not usually, unless you're uh, a little bit of a pyrotechnical <laughs> person. Um, but our kitchen was very simple, and I'll kind of get to why that is in a sec. But let's first enter our bathroom and look at some of our water systems. So I'll touch on our wet mechanical system first. Basically, we have two products in here. Our Sun Bandit all electric resistance water heater, highly insulated tank, allows us to store water at high temperatures if we'd like, um, and very efficient, so low loads come, that, come from that um, to heat our water. And then our recovered gray water system. This is a very compact gray water system compared to most, and it does something very simple but important. It takes our shower water, filters it, and stores it in a 60 gallon tank, and then it reuses it uh, for our toilets. So this is a very simple, easy gray water system that we really think could be implemented in uh, a lot of different regions and pass some municipalities code challenges. And so you're, you're uh, focusing on all kinds of different energy efficient, resource conserving um, improvements and innovations, right, for this, this competition because you're challenged to not just produce solar power. I mean, that's, you know, anyone can do that, but to make a house that is, that is net zero, that is uh, ultra efficient beyond that is really part of the game here, right? Exactly. So it's really a multifaceted competition in which we have to think about all aspects of a house from energy balance to market appeal to architecture and engineering. So we've had to come up with a, or look at a lot of different areas of the home. So I'll show you actually next one of the, those innovations um, that we use in the house. I'm going to turn off these lights real quick. And if you uh, zoom in on our uh, beetle kill lumber up there, those are embedded with uh, fiber optic cables on the exterior. And they're allowing natural light into the bathroom without having any privacy or ugliness concerns you might get with a window in an urban infill lot. So your window could either look right at your neighbor's window or at a brick wall. Instead, we could use something like this to allow natural light in and have a pretty beautiful effect within the room. You can see the same wall here on the le left. Um, you can turn on the lights. It's actually made out of beetle kill lumber, a local lumber uh, known to a lot of Coloradans. Um, that's very plentiful and actually a pretty beautiful art installation if you do it right.
Yeah, terrific. Cool. Um, and so you mentioned that this is uh, something that you know would be good for privacy in a, in a sort of like um, urban setting. So um, talk a little bit more about you know the sort of where this house is going to live. You know, in your yep. design. So let me bring you actually straight over to this poster. Um, this is a our poster of population density and our stackable design concept. So Richmond was a suburb for a very long time of California. Um, that was a single unit detached sort of setting, that typical suburbia. And it's quickly moving to this higher density uh, area as um, San Francisco expands. So we want to design for this middle density urban infill lot. Um, and so we came up with this five unit uh, stack configuration. It's stair steps back, one unit, then two units, then three units. Um, and it can fit on a long shotgun lot uh, like that's about 40 by 100 feet. Um, so that's a pretty unique concept for our competition. Uh, a lot of people do single family homes and we can function as a single family home but we also want to create something that functioned um, in a little bit different setting. So also that also brings me into our living room. Um, we're standing right now in that living room um, and it is currently set up in a office bedroom configuration. And what I mean currently set up is actually these white walls with paneling on them are movable. All of our furniture in our bedrooms is built into cabinetry and Murphy furniture. Yeah. And we can slide these walls into different positions. So if I take you into our bedroom on the left, you'll see that our bed is currently in the down position. Um, what we can do with this bed though is we can Pick it up, easily flip up the legs. <laughs> look at, look at that. Away. Um, so now our bed's away, and we've opened up a little bit of floor space, but to make that floor space utilized by the rest of the people in the house, I actually can take this wall, That's really something. So we're moving an entire wall of this house here. That's amazing. So it tucks back into place like so. Um, we have a little bit farther to go, but there's some sensors back there that it's catching on. Um, but basically, you can make your living room three times the size. Um, this was really important for us because we want it to appeal to a lot of different uh, people in the city of Richmond. Everyone from the single family, roommates, uh, family with a couple of kids, or just a couple. Um, and so this allows them to either have two bedrooms, a bedroom and a bonus room, a bedroom and an office, or a lot of different configurations. Um, so that was a big thing that we were looking for. Terrific. So, and if you're just joining us, again, this is Solar Decathlon 2017, a competition where college student teams from around the world design and build solar-powered houses. This is the RISE house from the University of California, Berkeley, and University of Denver. Um, tell me a little bit about that partnership, because, you know, you guys are, uh, you know, in different states. How did that come about? Yeah, so our collaboration started about a year ago, and I got to say it was one of the best decisions we ever made. Um, so a past competitor from the Purdue in-home in 2011 is now faculty at the University of Denver, Eric Colt. When he found out that it was happening in his own backyard, he wanted to get involved again. Unfortunately, that was past the uh, deadline to apply. Um, so he reached out to me and our team, and we met in uh, Denver last year at a conference, and we decided to start collaborating. And that collaboration quickly went from them helping us out here at the competition to us actually building at the University of Denver this summer. Um, so they were able to provide budgeting, scheduling, constructability reviews uh, throughout last semester. And then as we entered the summer, their students really helped us make this dream a reality. We had about seven uh, Berkeley students out here throughout the summer, and then anywhere from 10 to 15 DU students out throughout the summer helping us do that construction. Terrific, okay. Um, so. Uh, we saw, you know, moved this wall over here, shrank this room down, I, there's, so there's another similar wall on the other uh, side? It's the exact same design. The only thing that's different about that room, if we want to go in, is that instead of the uh, cabinetry on the right side of the bed, we actually have a desk. This allows us to use this room as the office space, is what we're calling it. However, uh, the cabinetry on either side of the Murphy beds can really be custom uh, to the tenant's needs. 
Okay, and then so we can also look, you know, we've got nice big windows here out onto your patio, which is, uh, I'm sure, a, a key feature of the house here. Yeah, so our windows and patio are huge for us. Uh, the windows uh, provide a lot of natural light to the house, and the reason why they're so big is we actually only have windows on our south facade. Um, that was due to that urban infill concept and having uh, buildings or homes on either side. We just we couldn't uh, justify having windows there, so we had these huge windows or window doors installed, which bring a lot of natural light to the house. And then the deck is so large because again, it is the roof of the unit below in our multi-family concept. So you're looking at the exact same size as the house. Um, in the far left corner as well, we have a staircase which shows that communication up to the next floor, or in this case, up to the very top roof deck. Finally, uh, the, the patio is meant to be used for communal interaction. You can see uh, the large picnic table, and actually there's a bag -o set in the corner, bag set in the corner under the stairs hiding from the snow. Um, and then also we think it could be a good place to do community gardening and really have a greenery space, especially in a climate like California where you can grow vegetables and fruits all year round. Terrific. Okay. Um, so it looks like, you know, it's, the deck is snow covered but holding up well. Uh, so it sounds like you're getting some good testing for uh, Richland uh, with it going uh, through its first snowstorm, right? Yeah, we're getting some uh, real good testing. It's nothing we really uh, had in mind that we'd see here at the competition. Um, however, luckily enough, we were uh, required to build for both Denver, Richmond, and the IBC codes. So um, we're, we have no worries about the snow load that's happening on our roof and deck, um, and we really believe this house is functioning great in a cold temperature that it wasn't expected to, uh, to be in. Um, terrific. Okay, why, why don't we just kind of head back out into the uh, open uh, living room area here. Um, so uh, th uh, is there anything else that uh, we're, we're missing that we, we should know about? So those are the big features of our house. Um, we really kept it simple and easy for the user to um, function. Uh, our sliding walls are actually built on pocket door tracks, which is something very uh, unique um, and simple um, and easy to design, as well as our systems have, they don't have a huge uh, technical background to it. It's just dials um, and buttons, um, which is bringing you back to the normal days, but uh, is very easy to function for anyone uh, who needs to turn up the heat or turn on the AC. Terrific. And I think you guys are doing pretty well in the standings. How are you feeling about the competition? Oh, we're feeling great. Um, we're actually right now second in the standings, and we're really proud of that. Um, this is the fun part, though. Uh, we got the house here, and that was our first goal. Um, and we met that, so in our minds, we already won. Uh, and so everything from here on out has just been icing on top of the cake. Yeah, it's a serious accomplishment just to get this far. Yes, yes, it is. All right, well, best of luck in the competition. Uh, again, this is Solar Decathlon 2017 in Denver, Colorado, uh, undergoing a bit of weather, but it seems like you guys are taking it in stride, the house is taking it in stride, uh, and the competition continues. So this is the Rise House from UC Berkeley and the University of Denver. If you want to vote in the People's Choice poll, you can go to the Solar Decathlon Facebook page and vote for Rise Home. All right, so thanks everybody for watching. Uh, stick to stay with us as we uh, cover the rest of the houses in the Solar Village at Solar Decathlon 2017.